Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship. Thank you for being here. We have got uh, a busy day. Like my senses are overwhelmed already. It's, it's, and it's all good things. Uh, so I've got a handful of announcements before we begin what is uh, going to be our Creation Care Sunday, sort of syncing up with Earth Day tomorrow. We're going to focus our liturgy and worship around biblical and theological themes of appreciating uh, and caring for the natural world that God has called good. So that's where our worshipful direction goes today, but we're also going all sorts of other directions just to keep you on your toes, all right? So a handful of announcements, though. Again, reminder that coming up already, May 5th, will be the installation services for our next associate Pastor, Pastor Matthew Engham. Uh, I hope you can be there for those one of those installation services as it's a celebratory moment for our community and for our welcome of Pastor Matthew. And also on that same day, uh, just keep in your, in your heart and in your prayers that we'll also be celebrating our eighth grade confirmands at a 1 p.m. service on May 5th. So big day for the church, getting pastor and confirmed members and all those good things. And also speaking of members, on May 12th, the following Sunday, Mother's Day, uh, the kids will be singing at the 1045 service that day, but um, May 12th will be our new member Sunday, where we'll celebrate the new members we've received in the last so many months. And also, this is a, this, this is a, a lame announcement that I have to repeat every so often. And some of you might even already know the direction I'm going. It's my understanding that a handful of you have received some spam emails posing to be me. Uh, they're getting more and more clever uh, it, 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 by being vague and inviting you into engaging conversation with them. The key I, and we, the, the two parts, or two things I would say in response to this when it happens is, Number one, always know that I probably won't solicit m cash from you directly <laughs> in weird ways, right? I won't ask you to go get an Apple gift card and put $150 on it. But it, it, they are getting more and more clever, though. Um, so the, the, the big thing is to look at the email address, all right? Look at the email address. If it's not Pastor Joe at FirstLutheranChurch.com, it might be Pastor Joe 4454 at Gmail. That's not going to be me, okay? Pastor Joe at FirstLutheranChurch.com. Pay attention to that. And then report it as spam. And if you can let us know, please do, because we want to protect you as much as we can, okay? It's too bad that people with such skill set and determination don't do something better with their time, but uh, take care of yourself. Be vigilant out there. And also, this is kind of a bummer of news, but there's silver lining, and that is our beloved and wildly uh, helpful and competent and reliable Melissa Christensen, our communications director, has uh, submitted her, her resignation as she moves on to a new chapter in her life. They're remaining a part of the community. She's remaining a member, but it's time for her in her discernment to, to step back away from the position of communications director uh, but she said she looks forward to being involved and invested as ever in FLC. So we give thanks for that. But I can't say enough good things about what Melissa has been to our team and our ministry here at First Lutheran. And I just give so much thanks to God for her. As bummed as I am, she's just one of the, my favorite people I've ever worked with. And I think the staff would say the same thing. So we're, we're bumming a little bit. We're grieving a little bit that, that, that this is happening. But we celebrate that she's made this discernment for her and her family. Also, between services, I told you your senses might be overwhelmed. Between services, uh, we're going to actually, we've moved the adult education session into the chapel because there's been a lot of, I think, excitement and fervor for it. So we just wanted better uh, seating available to all of you uh, who want to attend our session on Bonhoeffer and the church in Nazi Germany. Uh, Pastor Roy, or Dr. Hammerling, is going to kind of take the lead. I'm, I'm co-teaching, which is generous to say that. Thank you, Dr. Emily. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, he's a, a critical, iconic f 
figure and theologian, to say the least, about him. And, and uh, I hope you can make it between services in the chapel over here for, for our sessions on Bonhoeffer today and next week. So, two-part series. With that, it's my, my pleasure to introduce uh, Keith Pearson. He's a guest today who's going to offer a brief temple talk. He is the ELCA's regional gift planner for this area, and Keith's going to invite us into thinking about various forms of generosity. So thank you, Keith. Good morning. <laughs> so the uh, image on the screen I felt was uh, a good choice for today since you're celebrating creation care, uh, planting trees under whose shade we will not rest. Uh, I want you to think back. What's your earliest memory of being in the church? Then think about the faces, the faces that brought you up in your faith. Maybe it was a Sunday school teacher, a confirmation teacher, maybe it was your parents, an aunt or an uncle. Somebody laid the groundwork. Somebody planted that seed in you that now lives in a faithful life. So the work that I do is to encourage you to give gifts in a way that will, well, plant trees, trees of faith that others will rest under that shade. Uh, these are most often they're uh, estate-based gifts or gifts that you give after your life is complete and you still have things left over, uh, wealth left over that might be turned into a gift. And uh, I, I like to say too, this is the easiest gift to give because it doesn't take any money out of your pocket today. It doesn't change anything about your lifestyle, but it does give you one ch last chance to make a testimony of your faith. One more statement, one more chance to teach, one more chance to share with your family, your community, your church, what was most important to you. If you'd be interested in talking about that, I'm happy to help you. I don't have anything to sell you. I don't make anything off of any gift that you do give, but I can help you navigate this thing. This is a, a thing that is common enough that just about anybody can do it, but it's also complicated enough that it helps to have a little bit of guidance. So I'd be happy to help you uh, on, the, on your way, work with the other professionals that you work with, uh, your tax folks, your financial planners, what have you, uh, and we'll help you put together such a plan so that you can leave a legacy of faith for the future. Thank you. Thank you again, Keith. And, and if you miss Keith today, I can always connect you uh, with him if it comes up later that you'd like a little uh, more interaction with, with that type of planning. So thank you again, Keith. With that, I'm glad Deb has arrived at the, at the lectern as a member of our creation care team. And we begin our creation care worship in the name of the Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We enter into the song of creation. Earth cradles our ancestors, birthing new life. We enter the prayer of creation. Sky brings darkness and light, holds storms and the stars. We enter the praise of creation. Mountains peaked with snow, hills swaying with the grasses. We enter the silence of creation. Humanity, Humanity between the ground and the heavens. We come here humbly as one earthly family to worship our creator, the giver of form, the maker of space. Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite you to rise as you are able, and we sing together our gathering hymn, this is my father's world.
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, in this season, Christ, the one who was buried into the heart of the earth and then raised up to new life, forgives all your sin. Freed from your burdens, be led by the Spirit to do God's healing work in the world. Amen. You may be seated. And it seems that the confession language didn't uh, quite sync up with the bulletin, so I'm just going to invite you into a moment of contemplation here as I, as I read a more creation care-centered confession prior to our hymn of praise. So I invite you into that now. Gracious God, in this season of renewal and regeneration, guide us to better live in relationship with your amazing creation. Grow our understanding of your vision for all that you conceived and guide our touch as we tend it with loving care. Help us to see where we've mistreated your creation. Help us hear your voice calling us to actively heal any harm we've done. Give us voices that call for restoration of your handiwork. Amen. We sing together our hymn of praise, Earth and All the Stars. It's hymn number 731 if you happen to have a hymnal at home. And we'll sing verses 1, through, one and 2 and 4. Please join me in reading the prayer of the day. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate all that you have created and entrusted to our care. Help us faithfully appreciate the tremendous variety of sights, sounds, aromas, tastes, and textures that enrich our lives. Help us see your presence in all you've created. Teach us how to help heal the land so its people can be healed, sustaining all for generations to come. In you who created heaven and earth, we pray. 
Amen. Good morning, my name is Madeline Suki, and today the scripture reading is from Genesis, chapter 1, verses 24 through 31. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. 
God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humans in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, so you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made and indeed, it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Here ends the reading. Will you join me in the responsive reading of Psalm 4? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. Good morning. I'm Pastor Ann Newgard Larson. I'm a newly retired pastor of the ELCA. And before I read the gospel, I want to make one commentary, which is back when I went to school at Gustavus. Sorry, Cobbers. One of the best classes that I ever had was taught by Dr. Gerhard Alexis. And the point that he made in the first day, which was a class called Studies in the Wilderness, is depending upon how we translate the Genesis text that you just heard. We can talk about either subduing the earth or we can talk about being caretakers and being good stewards. Please rise now for the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace be to you in peace from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dad decided that we should have a window on the east side of the living room. There was a lovely view of the bay and it had the added bonus that we could look out onto the pasture there where our 4-H project were spending the summer. There were sheep waiting for the fair to start. One morning, though, we didn't have to look out that small window to see the sheep. We were able to look out the front window, not because they had escaped the fences and were now in front of the house, but because they were out in the water of Buffalo Lake, trying to swim, and they don't do it well. We assumed that some dogs must have chased them, and they were panicking. And now we were panicking. And though for some reason my memory has it that both mom and dad were not home that day, my sister said that mom made her run down to the lake and get into a canoe with her because they were going to rescue the sheep. Sheep weigh a lot as it is, but you get them waterlogged and frightened, you cannot get them into a canoe. And so, for two reasons, my mom told my sister Beth to jump in. Firstly, my mom did not swim well. And secondly, the sheep belonged to Beth and the rest of us. She was able to get two of them back to shore by holding them by the neck and swimming them and then going back and getting the second one. And it was very clear to all of us that day that sheep do need a shepherd. Jesus said, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. A hireling will let the wolf get the sheep. The good shepherd is willing to lay down his life for the sheep. What you might not know is that the context of this particular passage comes in the midst of a conflict. Now, this would have been a familiar image for the people of Israel. Shepherds were often used to describe leaders. And we heard the beloved 23rd Psalm this morning telling us the attributes of a good shepherd. A good shepherd or a good leader, or a good king, make decisions which benefit the people, not themselves. A good shepherd should be willing to make sacrifices on behalf of another. And the leaders of the temple to whom Jesus was speaking that day had failed in their care for the people. And rules that were meant to benefit the people had become more important as rules. The people were having these rules in order to give them a life that worked well. Now where the conflict came in is that Jesus had given sight to a man who was born blind. And rather than rejoice in that gift, the leaders were complaining because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. The Sabbath was the day when no work was to be done. And they had even kicked out the formerly blind man for declaring that Jesus had restored his sight. They were refusing to acknowledge that Jesus had the capacity to do that. But like a good shepherd, Jesus went looking for the man and restored him to community. Jesus proved himself that day to be the good shepherd. Dr. David Lose in his blog, in the meantime, once made the claim that there is only one good shepherd. We know that Jesus was willing to freely give his life for the sake of the world, for the sake of even more flocks than we may be aware of, 
But there are hirelings in the world who presume to speak words of wisdom, but in fact can make people feel less than valued. And all you have to do is to think of the many advertisements that spend less time telling you about the attributes of their product and more time letting you know that you are in need of being fixed. If only we had the right car, or iPhone, or the right diet, or a closet organizer, and oh, by the way, I can sell you the color-coded bins that we can give you, many count their value by the number of likes that they have on social media, and our time and attention become quantified and commodified and sold as a means of making money. The wisdom of the Good Shepherd is to remind you that you are enough as you are, and that God has provided for all of us all that we need and loves us no matter what, and has given us a savior who laid down his life for us. The abundant life of which Jesus speaks is not a life of accumulating stuff, but it is a life lived without fear. And isn't that something we need to be reminded of? The Good Shepherd doesn't keep us from having problems, but stays with us as we walk through shadowed valleys. Have no fear, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom so that you can be good stewards of those gifts, both for yourself and for your neighbors and for those who come after us. Pay attention to the many ways that you have been blessed by God. Live with thankful hearts and generous spirits in this life of abundance that you have been given. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ann. My name is Gary Gorham, and I'm a member of the First Lutheran Church Creation Care Team. And I'm also a member of the Northwest Minnesota ELCA Synod's Creation Care Task Force. Now, notice that the phrase creation care appears in both of these different groups. Well, the Synod's task force recently conducted a survey of the 220 congregations within the Synod. One of the questions that congregations had for us was this, what does creation care mean? Well, I believe that's an important question, and it's a question that's foundational for we as Lutheran Christians. We recite the Apostles' Creed every Sunday, and it states, we believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Well, what does that mean? Well, first, one of God's characteristics is to be creative. Well, we have many creative people here at First Lutheran Church. We have quilters and oil painters and water painters and photographers, wood turners, wood carvers, poets, writers, music composers, gar gardeners, just to name a few. Well, when we see these creative people, we see the imago dei, the image of God in that creativeness. But we can also see these people's, in these people's creative work, part of who they are as people. Well, as a kid, I helped my dad with a lot of building projects, and he'd always say, you can tell a lot about a person by the work that they do. Well, in the same way, we can tell a lot about God just by looking at the work that God has done. We often refer to creation as the first Bible. Romans 1, 20, 21 says this, For what is known about God is plain to us, because God has shown it. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power, his divine nature has been clearly seen 
in the things that he's made. God reveals God's self as, as his incarnate self in the material world that he created. As the saying goes, he's hidden in plain view. But second, as creator, God claims rightfully ownership of the earth. Now, we may have a legal title to the piece of earth, but we're not its owners. We are only the caretakers of someone, capital S, someone else's property. Now, we have the privilege of earning a living from God's property, or we can recreate on God's property. We can enjoy the beauty of God's property. But throughout Scripture, from Genesis to Psalms to the prophets, all the way to Revelation, we are called to care for God's purpose. God's property. We're compelled to care. We're commanded. We're mandated to care for God's property. Well, herein, though, is grace. Because, you see, God allows us to share with him, with God, and what God has made. By grace, we have the privilege to use and enjoy creation. God reveals his incarnational glory, might, eternal nature, and beauty of that creation. But that privilege comes with a stipulation. Take care of it. For that reason, First Lutheran Church, the Northwest Missouri, Minnesota Synod, wrong denomination, uh, <laughs> The Northwest Minnesota Synod, as well as the entire Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, works to promote creation care. This week, may I ask each of us to take time to experience God in God's creation. Take a few minutes to walk through the woods, through a field, by the lake, and recite the first part, that first uh, article of the Apostles' Creed. God, the creator of heaven and earth. As you take special note of the air, of the water, of the plants, then thank God for that privilege of sharing in that creation. Allow yourself to fall in love with God's creation, that little piece of it, and ask God, how can I participate in caring for your creation? Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Ann and Gary, for your proclamations. I invite us all to rise as we're able as we sing together our hymn of the day, For the Beauty of the Earth. And we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. And for those of the hymnal at home, it's number 879. As we go through in confirmation with our 7th and 8th graders and we cover the creed, one of the basics we remember is that the creed is a confession of belief in the triune God, the creator, the son, 
and the Holy Spirit. And as Gary proclaimed as the reminder that leads us into a different version of the, our confession of, the, of faith as God is creator of heaven and earth, I thought I would take each person of the Trinity, the creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and add some of the natural world wonder and imagery that we see in the Bible ascribed to each one of those persons of the Trinity. So I wanted to give you that heads up too because you're like rote memory. You might go right into the, the other creed. This one's going to be a little more awkward because I wrote it, all right? So, but we confess an affirmation of faith in the Creator God together. We believe in the Creator who clothes the world in glory, who is a friend of all creatures great and small, and who reveres the natural world as good and calls those created in the image of God to do the same. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son, who admires the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, who spoke to storms and blessed waters, who came to redeem the whole of creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit, whose wind swept over creation at the beginning, who created and sustains the church to love creation the way that we are loved by the triune God. We believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And at this time, another member of the Creation Care team, Tom Neuenfeldt, will lead us into the prayers of the people. As we enter into the prayers of the people, at the end of each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, if you will together respond, hear our prayer. O God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, your great love has placed us in your creation, and you commanded us to care for it. Your works declare glory and strength, and you call us to praise and reverence. Help us to love and respect all that you have made. Help us to care for what you have made good and holy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our oh Lord, help us to realize that in an environmental catastrophe, the people who suffer first and greatest are often the poorest of the poor. We pray for those who live in poverty and suffer the devastating effects of flooding, drought, and other environmental issues. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, we lift up to you members of our community who have asked us to pray for them. We lift them to your healing presence. We pray for Brent Blake, Joe Morrison, Bill Wegscheid, Dave Neustad, Dick Dolan, Sav Haverkamp, Angie Barnack, Cole Wulcher, Baby Winona, Marlene, Michael, Taylor Hansen, Nora Sarnanen, and Sue Harper. And gracious God, we also lift up to those close to us who weigh heavily in our hearts in this moment of silent prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we also lift will you also lift up to, the, to you those who mourn the death of their loved ones. We ask you to wrap your loving arms around them and comfort the family of Victor Roll and comfort the family of Liz Matheson. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share that peace now with one another. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Karen. As you finish up sharing the peace, you may be seated. At this time, our ushers can begin to prepare to collect the offering. And I'm going to ask any young folks that we have today, or young people at heart, or those with just a readiness to participate in the noisy offering today, uh, to come on up and help 
collect our loose change offering that will be simultaneous to the plates being passed around for our general fund and general ministries. You can also give electronically if you prefer that method. But meanwhile, concurrent to all that, our noisy offering will be collected, asking for any loose change you're able and willing to give. And for the month of April, it will go to one of our greatest partners in serving the vulnerable among us and in our community and area, Churches United. So thank you so much for your generosity. Sincerely thank you for all your forms of generosity that empower this place and this people to continue to do our best to live into the places and service that God is calling us. Let us pray together for the offering we've just received. Loving God, receive this offering for the building up of your kingdom, the proclamation of your word, and the loving of our neighbor. Amen. My friends, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And Lord Jesus, hear us as we pray together, the one you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated uh, so as to give uh, a sure time for, uh, for Roy and I to set up the chapel and get ready for the adult education hour. We'll actually switch up the way we normally do communion today. Instead of kneeling or standing at the altar, we'll do continuous lines of communion. So you'll just receive the bread here. But if you do have a gluten-free uh, uh, requirement, just let us know in the moment. And we'll grab that for you and make it available to you. And then you'll receive the wine next to the bread. Uh, you can grab your own cup. The, the lighter colored liquid is the non-alcoholic option, grape juice, and the darker is the wine. And then if you would just discard your cups in the bowls on the way back to your pews, that would be, that would be great. As we understand throughout many proclamations uh, today is that God is an earthy God, that God gets involved with the elements of creation. And this is just yet another sign of that, a physical sign in the bread and wine of God's commitment and love and mercy for each and every one of you. And therefore, each and every one of you are welcome to the Lord's table today. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
May the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen each of you and give you peace. Let us pray together our post-communion prayer. Gracious God, at this table you have nourished our body and soul with food and drink. As you have been food and drink for us, transform us to be food and drink for one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please rise once more as you are able and receive this benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless each and every single one of you now and forever. Amen. Our sending him, let all things now living, number 881. Well, my friends, thank you so much for worshiping together today. A special thanks to our musicians for always giving so much of yourselves to help lead us into a worshipful place through the bells and through you, Karen. And thank you sincerely to our creation care team who gave so much of your time and passion and heart to help lead worship today. And I won't be heading back there to shake any hands and it's no reflection of what I think of you, okay? <laughs> I have to just run over there and set everything up. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week and that you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. For more information on the life of our congregation, please visit firstlutheranchurch.com. God's peace be with you.